Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Lonely Man's Podcast. Uh, my name is Jesse Burlingame. I'm here with Ben Basunga. Uh, sorry that we didn't release an episode last week. Or I'm, not. Yeah, whatever, dude. Yeah, dude. Like, you're sorry, an episode Ian. now. <laughs> we love you, man. Thank you for tuning in. You're getting an episode now. Shit was happening. He's like, yo, you went to some festivals and there's no podcast? Bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> You out of town too long, dog. You better get back. Yeah, let's get right into the festivals, baby. Ben was at the Two Step In Festival. Two Step In. Where was that? Georgetown? Georgetown. It's a country music festival. Right. Which the craziest only thing that was weird was that like T Pain and Diplo were there. What really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know why T Pain was like No, yeah. I'm mad I didn't go. <laughs> I wish I was working that instead. Bro. T-Pain is exactly how you think T-Pain would be. Yeah? You met him? Yeah. T-Pain, so he... Most of the people... I think like, he would be a nice, fun guy. Bro. <laughs> like, ex- friendly guy. Bro, just out here talking shit about white people dressed in, like, the cowboy shit. And, like, one <laughs> girl walked by and he's yeah. just like... He's, he's from like, Tallahassee. Yeah, he's like, man, those are definitely stripper shoes. <laughs> and, like, just told this crazy story how there's a... Uh, there's this comic. Who is it? Not a comic. It's a... Uh, oh, Fuck. Uh, Roy Wood Jr. Yeah, he's a comic. Yeah, no, yeah, it is a comic. So Roy Wood Jr. tells this story about how when he was a young dude in Florida, mm-hmm. he went to this Jamaican club back in like the 90s or whatever, 80s, or something like that. And he's like, I had like 20 bucks to get in. I had 20 bucks for the night, right? Mm-hmm. And then um, if you show up like before 11 o'clock or whatever, it's $10 for uh, for the to get in at the door. And then $10 for drinking money. So, you know, he's got a little bit of something, right? Mm-hmm. This is the 80s, 90s when you can grab drinks for pretty cheap, right? And so then uh, he goes, he goes, but the Jamaican door guy wouldn't let him in. Mm. He's like, no, he would let him in, but it was $20 to get in. So it would be spending all of his money. Right. And Roy Wood Jr. is like fighting with this guy. Like, bro, just let me pay $10. The dude won't let him in. So finally, he uh, pays the $20. He gets in the club. And uh, he's telling T-Pain this story, mind you. And he gets into the club, and then he's like, at the end of the night, I'm walking out, like, fucked up, had, like, a great time. The door guy was like, was it worth it, man? He's like, and we, like, daffed it up, and we were cool and stuff like that. T-Pain listens to a story. He doesn't say anything the whole time. He's just, like, listening to the story. And then he goes, when you were at that club, was there, like, a little kid running around the whole time? He's like, yeah. He's like, I was that kid. That was my dad's <laughs> club. <laughs> T-Pain's Jamaican? What's up? I didn't know T-Pain was Jamaican. I feel like he's like Caribbean heritage or whatever. Yeah. But he's uh, grew up in Florida. Yeah. So, yeah. So, it's just like a... But he's yeah. from Florida, Florida. He is... Bro, he was rocking dreads before dreads were cool to rock. Like I with the blonde T-Pain. tips. He made like $34 million, lost it all, and then made another $34 million back again. <laughs> Which... Because he's... Bro... Bartender, I'm in love with a stripper. Yeah. Always bangers. Always. No matter who you are. I don't know if he owns those. Actually, Akon might. Akon might own them? Anyway, how'd you meet T-Pain? So, you know how most artists come through and they have, like, their own car or whatever driving through? Mm-hmm. Uh, T-Pain just, like, got dropped off in our lot and didn't have, like, a... And he's like, yeah, we'll go in your transportation. So he we just show up solo? He, I mean, he was with, like, a, like there's probably, like, two vans of him or whatever. Two vans of his, like, entourage. Yeah. And then... uh um, yeah, and then T Pain got into one van, and then his entourage got into the other one, mm. and yeah, but then like we met him like out like the doors and stuff like that. My friend told me all the stuff that T Pain was saying inside the van. It was just like the whole thing was just. But yeah, he's exactly how you would think T Pain would be. Yeah, is exactly auto-tuned. how he is. What's up? He speaks in auto tune, and he loves strippers, bro. <laughs> <laughs> he's all was about he with the some bartender, strippers? bro. He was making stripper jokes about girls. He was just like. <laughs> Yeah, that he man knows strippers. Yeah, and then apparently, he him. <laughs> apparently, there's all these weird T Pain stories from festivals. Mm. Like one girl, she said that uh, she was trying to, she had to drive T Pain, mm-hmm. and his manager couldn't find him. And then she's like, "I bet you I know where T Pain would be." And she finds T Pain doing karaoke on site, <laughs> just rolling solo doing karaoke. And then he, he's like, I don't want to leave yet. So they just hung out and did karaoke with T-Pain. Dude, that's dope. Yeah, he's just... I, I feel like T-Pain lives life. Yeah, he's living life for sure. If you... Because if you lost $34 million... Yeah. And then made it all back... Yeah. You know two things. That one, you can make $34 million. But two, that if you have nothing... Yeah. You can just running back to it. Just like run it's, it back. Yeah, yeah, just run it back. It's like an ultimate confidence. It's like... Going through some shit, you're like, I've already been through this. Mm-hmm. I ain't scared of it anymore. Like, I'm, I'm like, looking at T Pain for inspiration, dude. T Pain, bro. T Pain is my guiding light right now. <laughs> my spirit. <laughs> he's my moral compass. T Pain. 
Uh, was he with Diplo or, or were they doing separate things? They did it on separate days. Okay. I actually met Diplo too, but he just for a second, we just said hello to each other and then mm-hmm. he got in his own car. Wesley. Shout out Wesley. <laughs> Very, he seemed like a very like quiet guy because we had to like walk through the little security barriers. Yeah, um, and yeah, he just like didn't say anything. Like no one kind of said anything. The whole group was kind of like quiet. He's was, like a forty-five year old DJ that's just been going hard. Like, yeah, since day one, he's probably like mellowed out a little bit now. I don't know because I realized though, if you're gonna be doing that, you got to be hanging out with like all the dudes that looked around him, like all the people around him looked younger. And I was like, it only makes sense. Yeah. You're not like a 45 year old DJ hanging out with other 45 year olds. You no. know what I'm saying? Like it's a young man's game. Yeah. It is a young man's game. It's like, but also I feel like young people kind of give you energy. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Not like they like kind of like keep you feeling young. You know what I'm saying? In the sense mm-hmm. that like they're going out there like, Oh, I'm not worried about it. And you're like, oh, I'm not worried about it. Cause all the people I'm around aren't worried about it. Mm-hmm. But I, uh, yeah, I was at Coachella. I didn't meet anyone famous. No one famous at Coachella? Oh, Debbie Harry was in my van. Debbie Harry? Yeah, do you know who she is? Nah, no idea. The lead singer of Blondie? Okay, I know Blondie the band. Yeah. I didn't know Debbie Harry was the lead singer. Okay. Yeah, I had Debbie Harry in my van for like five minutes. <laughs> She's very old. <laughs> Too old to be doing this? <laughs> yeah, dude. It was like, go take a nap, Debbie. <laughs> How old do you Lay think down. She, she looked like she just wanted to lay down. <clears throat> How old would you have guessed she was when you looked at her? gotta be like 80 years old debbie harry 80 years old yeah look and it up st- still getting on that stage dude still doing it she was with uh niall rogers he's almost like 80 years old Whew. from la chic do you think they do you think they or have to do the it kids for the- might know niall rogers from playing on daft punk's get lucky he was in the other guy's van i was jealous of that debbie harry has to be like 80 years old 77 i, I was all right yeah so- close Man. An elderly woman. Do you think she had to be doing it for like money or like she wanted to be doing it? I don't know. I don't know what Blondie... I, I think Blondie's doing a lot of festivals still. I don't know what her finances are like or maybe she's just a true rock star just wants to be she out there just, doing it. She just people. loves it. Yeah. You know, it's like comedy when you're like, I don't want to fucking go up there tonight. And yeah. then you get up there, you're like, ah, I love this. And then you get off, you're like, I don't want that. And who at Coachella wants to see a 77-year-old woman? <laughs> Yeah, who even knows Blondie at Coachella anymore? Yeah, like I don't want to see the Rolling Stones anymore. I feel like I missed the the peak of that that band's run because they're all like eighty years old now. Yeah, it's, the Rolling Stones was that Mick Jagger. Mm-hmm. That guy still that dude is like the original Tiger Blood cat. Like yeah. that dude, he just never talked about it. He just lived it like his whole life, and he gets a pass for all the fucked up shit that he did like when he was younger, which. You know like he, what? What are you giving him a pass on? I don't agree to this yet. What's up? What are you passing him for? I'm not passing him. Society decided to pass. Oh, ah, okay, yeah. I mean, like all if the he did shit in the seventies. You you got away with it. Yeah, you did. All the underage girls that he was hooking up with in the seventies. Yeah, like it's it's a well known fact. People have written books books about it. Like mm. no one. He's just. It was just what they were doing back then. They were all doing it, so he just got a pass. I guess as long as they were conscious, you're, you have a, you get a pass on it. Yeah, back then, as long as they were alive. Yeah. yeah. Just like, <laughs> as long as they weren't in Chapel. If you were drugging them in the 70s and 80s, that shit will come back to haunt you, and then nothing will happen to you in the end. <laughs> <laughs> Some of them won't even come back to haunt you, as long as they didn't catch you. Back then, even if they weren't alive, Chappaquiddick, you know, they just... Oh, true, yeah. They just... As long as you had a good story. Shout out to the 70s, man. Bro, it must have been a crazy time. I think they were the oldest people at the festival. Um, I drove the Gorillas crew. One of their guys left a phone in my car. And then I drove them the next week, and they thought someone left a phone in my car, and they didn't. I searched the whole van. I searched the other person's van. And then I checked in the back seat. I found some AirPods. And I was like, ooh, I just got myself a sweet new pair of AirPods. Uh-huh. And then an hour later, they're like, hey, Jesse, can you check your van for AirPods? <laughs> Fuck. And they're like, yeah, let me go pull them out of the glove box where I'm storing them right now. <laughs> nah, I can't find them, Doc. <laughs> no AirPods in here, bro. Um, Were there a lot of old people? Like, Did you see older people like at the festival at all? Not really. A few like backstage... More than an ACL or less than ACL? Um, I was around ACL more, mm-hmm. so I can't give like a fair assessment. There were a good amount of old people, I would say, but everyone was like middle aged or younger. Okay, are we considered old people? Or are we considered middle aged or younger? We're younger than middle aged. We're for younger sure. than middle aged. Yeah. Okay. When does middle age begin? By the way, like you're f- like forty five. Forty five. Okay, we got plenty of time. Or what's um? Uh, I don't know. Are they going by a hundred years? <laughs> 
Do we still get 100 years to live? <laughs> I think average lifespan is, what, 77? Yeah. <coughs> For white people, I think it's like, white man is like 77, I think. Yeah, my bad. <laughs> I think I'm at like 71. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's not looking good I, for maybe you. Maybe you are middle age, actually. Yeah, you know, so at 71, that makes me 35. Yeah, so I'm about, to, I'm getting there. Yeah. So I got about two and a half years before I got to get my life in a whatever shape they got to deem it at for middle age. Mm-hmm. I was over by the artist compound, so that was mostly like young people. And all like the VIP lounges were next to us, too. Was there anything like dope in the artist lounge that they had there? Um, I didn't really check it out. I really didn't see shit at this festival. Did you? Were this you gonna just, be a boring podcast. I didn't see anything. Were you? <laughs> were you busy the whole time? Or were you I just was not doing yeah. shit. I was way busier than ACL. Oh, AC, for sure. ACL, we would have like four or five hours of downtime. Yeah. Um, this time we were running shuttles. Ah. So on at the top of the hour, every hour, a shuttle would pick up at a hotel. And then every bottom of the hour, we would do a shuttle from the site Bad. to the hotels. Yeah. yeah. So like you could just like, and if you got a bunch of those in a row, you would just be driving back and forth from the hotels the whole time, which I mostly did. So I was mostly driving artists like guests. Mm. They would have artist wristbands, but they like worked for the artists. So I drove, one guy was the set designer for Blackpink, who's like the biggest K-pop girl group out right now. Okay. They headlined Saturday night. K-pop got so big, and I know nothing about K-pop. I know nothing, but there were a lot of Asian girls on site that day when, when Blackpink was around. Yeah. I want to make a joke of just or, walk up to every Asian girl at Coachella and be like, hey, are you Blackpink? <laughs> <laughs> no, my bad. Bro, I bet you, if you Asian girls would love you. I don't know why you haven't been blowing Asian backs out this whole time. Asian girls love me? I think so. Oh, you think they would love me? Yeah, Asian girls love white guys. That's oh, like, uh, white guys, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sure. You're, you're, you're hella generic, bro. Yeah. You're long tee and your vans, dude. You're fucking, you're in there. And they're like, and you say, make a K-pop joke? Yeah. Killer. I drove a bunch of Blackpink, like, they had they had Blackpink shirts on. I don't know if they were in the entourage or what their deal was. Are they? They were all from New Zealand. K-pop from New Zealand? Yeah. Huh, I didn't see that one coming. No. I, I thought they were the all girl from Korea. like walked up to my van and asked me a question and I was like s- like mumbled something and she's like, "Oh my god, are you Kiwi?" And I was like, "What?" <laughs> she's like, "Oh, I th- when you when you spoke, it sounded like you had a New Zealand accent." And I was like, "No, I just mumble." <laughs> people think I'm like Russian all the time. Like, <laughs> people think I have accents when I'm just like mumbling words. <laughs> she's like, "Is this I can't even do it. How, how do you do a New Zealand I don't know. It sounds it's different than Australian. Yeah, it's a little more like nasally. Yeah, it's like oh, I don't know. It's like you're up Oi. there a little bit. Yeah, you UK way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, UK way. <laughs> like, what? No, no. No. Yeah, that wasn't it. But it was like yeah, the it was somewhere there. Yeah, somewhere in there. Oh, hey, mate. Um. Yeah. So I was mostly doing shuttles. The last day, the the very last day of the festival. Um, the lines back were crazy. Like. It took me, it was like 15 minutes to the hotel and 15 minutes back. I got to the hotel, picked a bunch of people up. It took us 90 minutes to get back. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah, it took, what, six times as long? Oh, my God. We were in the car for 90 minutes, and you yeah. know those people were probably starting to bitch after like 20. Dude, <laughs> they got in the car. It was a full van. They were very chatty. Everyone was fucking excited. <laughs> 10 minutes later, we're dead stopped in traffic just behind all these other vans and tour buses. Is there just one way to get in? It's one way in, one way out. Oh, man. Yeah, that's savage. So as soon as we just like stopped, everyone got quiet and no one said a goddamn (laughs) word. (laughs) For 73 minutes. (laughs) Until we got on site and then they're all just like... The guy opened the, d- the door was like, welcome to Coachella. They all just like breathed a sigh of relief. We're like, oh my God, thank you so much. Like, <laughs> thanks for driving. <laughs> yeah, no one, no, I was waiting for people. To, but like also, the, everyone just knew like there's nothing we can do about this. We just have to sit here and deal with it. That'd be fucked. I'd be heated. <laughs> I'd be sitting in that bitch like, you motherfucker. You're like pre, I was mad because I was going to go see Ray Shremmerd. Uh, didn't get to see Ray Shremmer? No, and then I pull up, and I didn't have another run till like 8 o'clock. I was free, and Ben Basunga popped into my head, don't go to the office. 
You stay away from that fucking office. Always. But I wanted to get a cold water from the office. Ah, amateur mistake. You can get water anywhere else. You and then get- I, well, I wanted to check the board mm. real quick. Yeah, they're like, oh, Jesse, you're done with that? Hey, can you just go back to the hotel? So they sent me right back to the same hotel. It took 75 minutes to go back. <laughs> Bruh. <laughs> yeah, I fucked up. Classic, yeah, I'm sure mistake, bro. You never. <laughs> I should know better by now. It was my second weekend, too. Yeah. That was second weekend? Yeah. Dang, yeah, that's rookie. From now on, I'm going to the office first thing in the morning. I'm grabbing six waters. And just hoarding them in, in my backpack but the rest of the day. The thing about most festivals, you can get water and, like, drinks from anywhere. You can get them from catering. You can get them from... Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can get them from the artist relations. It was the closest drinks. walk. I was desperate, man. Yeah, man. I mean, <laughs> it's... I fucked up. <laughs> Listen. I could have walked to catering and then walked right to the stage for Race Rubber. It was on the way. Bro, you know, it's, it's what you're willing to risk in life. You yeah, know, you take true. the easy route and that ended up being the long route. Yeah, it's Race Rubber. Race... Oh, well. Now you got to type... <laughs> <laughs> I, you know what? I went into the no flex zone. That was my bad. <laughs> the office is the no flex zone. <laughs> you know better. <laughs> <laughs> no break zone. <laughs> Ray Schremer. I saw. There's so many like now it's so weird because I look at festival lineups and I realize I have no fucking clue who like ninety yeah. percent of these people are. I didn't know who this band Knocked Loose was. I've heard of them, and I think I heard that they were like a hardcore band. So I was like, oh, this is very left field for Coachella. It really makes no sense. I'm going to go watch this. So Sunday of the second weekend, I texted Paul Cyphers because I'm like, I think this is Paul Cyphers music. So I was like, hey, is Knocked Loose any good? I have, ch- I have time to watch one band and they're about to go on. And by the time I got over to the tent, Paul just rolled back, eh. <laughs> <laughs> and then texted me about himself for like 10 minutes. So I was like, <laughs> I'm just responding like, Knocked Loose rules, dude. <laughs> uh, were they, did they actually any good? Yeah, they were sick. Were they like heavy or was it like... Yeah, it's metalcore. I have no idea what that genre is, but... Yeah. All I know is the the breakdowns where it gets real slow. It's like... Dun, 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 dun. Was, he screaming? Dun, 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 dun. was he screaming? The dude, the lead singer was... <laughs> He, from where I was standing, he looked like Jimmy Clifford because he just had like blonde hair. Yeah. He was wearing black clothes. Pretty so, much. So I just imagine it was Jimmy Clifford up there the whole time, which was amusing. Jimmy Jimmy Clifford looks like uh, the equivalent of a blonde haired Paul Cyphers in Austin. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like when they look when they have blonde hair, they just look like Jimmy Clifford. When they have dark hair, they look like Paul Cyphers. Yeah, it's the same. I want to see Paul Cyphers with bleach blonde hair. I think that'd be a fun. Didn't he bleach his hair? And then he looked like Jimmy Clifford. <laughs> Did he bleach his hair? Didn't I, he? It went pink and then it like faded out. I don't know if he ever went like full blonde with it. Because I think before he made it pink, he bleached it. Uh, yeah, but wasn't it like a weird color still? That's fair. I don't think it was like fully there. Yeah, I don't know. Would you ever Would you ever frost your tips, bro? Yeah, I wanted to, I wanted to bleach the mullet before I was done with it. You should have bleached the mullet. I mean, yeah. if you're going to rock a mullet, you might as well have the I should have done something weird. Because I could have like dyed my whole head. And then just kept shaving the top and the sides, so only the back would be colored. And then it would grow out like halfway. It looks. It, it would have got really weird if I started coloring it. It was already ostentatious <laughs> to begin with. Yeah, but ever since you cut the mullet, your life changed. It did. Yeah, it started getting pussy. Again. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "Why'd you cut the mullet?" I was like, "I'd like to have sex again. <laughs> that would be fun." <laughs> and I cut my hair and I started getting laid. It was very strange. Uh, very, very strange. Yeah, the world <laughs> works in mysterious ways. It does. <laughs> uh, oh, someone asked if I got any booty at Coachella. And I was like, no, I didn't get to talk to any chicks at all. And you look like a cop when you're working there. Did, you, did they make you guys do the black on black? Yeah, all black with like the walkie talkie, like earpiece oh, yeah. and everything. Like, yeah, you just look like a narc. <laughs> For sure. So I'm just like, yeah. Just stay. I'm like, yeah, I want to watch K Tronado for 50 minutes. Everyone, stay, get away from me. <laughs> I'm the police. It does give you like a certain credence to like, were, were you able to like access most of the places like around the stages and like back spots? Yeah, like Knocked Loose was inside of a tent and they had it all fenced off like with a line, like all bicycle rack. And uh, it was a huge line to get in there. And I just walked up to the exit door, showed the cops my bracelet, and they're like, oh, yeah, you're good. And just let me right in. So yeah. That was dope. Yeah, the convenience factor of just being able to like, yeah, let me access everything. Yeah, yeah. Coachella is probably like the most locked down festival, I think. Really? All work. Yeah, because it's like the biggest one. Like there's so much at stake there. Like the level of celebrities they have, like the security they need. Mm. And like people really want to be there. So like 
people try to fake bracelets and they're like yeah don't post any pictures of your bracelets or lanyards or whatever like they're so easy to copy apparently really yeah or like people just work on that all year like trying to find <laughs> out what the coachella <laughs> bracelet looks like so they can sneak in but that's really the whole year they're just like this year these are my coachella bracelet designs yeah and they're just waiting because i feel like uh when I, they do them at two-step and all the c3 festivals they all have uh scannable chips yeah, that's a big thing now, yeah. Yeah, so I, I'm surprised that Coachella did. Was Coachella doing something like that, too? Yeah, they, you had to scan through everything. Yeah. I mean, it's hard to kind of scan if you make your own, right? Like, yeah. you know, it's just not in the database. Yeah. Yeah, you really can't get through anywhere without, like, scanning your bracelet and having the little thing light up. Yeah, the little thing is just like, yes or no. Nobody even cares. But it's by just, Sunday, I was just, like, waltzing through, like, VIP checkpoints and stuff. Like, no one gave a fuck. It's like, yeah, it's the last day. Like, bro, it's last the final day, hours. Yeah, no one gives a fuck at all about the last day of yeah. any, like, festival. Everyone's like, fuck it. We already made it here. If we just get to this time, we can get the fuck over with this bullshit. Yeah. Um, I think that's why everyone was nice to me in the van also. Oh, the second van that took 75 minutes, they were lit the whole entire time. <laughs> <laughs> they never slowed down. And uh, my phone went out of service, and so my music stopped playing. And they're like, can you turn the music back up? And I was like, I don't have any service. And the girl's like, here, plug in my phone. And then it was just Beyonce dance party sing along. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> Which I'm down with, honestly. What were you playing? I was playing Kalela remixes. Oh, okay. So it was already very like black and gay. So then they played some more black and gay music, which I enjoy. Oh, man. I went with some Yacht Rock. And I got to tell you, for yeah. two-stepping, for two stepping, it was killing. Uh, they, they I had it. some Yacht Rock on at one point yeah, during the weekend. I, I found like anytime I'm driving middle-aged white people around, Yacht Rock is the way to go. Yeah, you put on What a Fool Believes. <laughs> oh, man. It's it's a wrap. Tech9 got me on a Yacht Rock kick, and I found this like a central Yacht Rock playlist that I've been bumping. I, I found it on a, um, a Spotify a Yacht Rock playlist, and yeah. I've been, I was hitting that bitch, and it was just it was killing. Old women were loving it. I'm like, they can't help themselves. Yeah, like, this Chris music McCross, hits their soul. Some Kenny Loggins, <laughs> some Michael McDonald's. Some yeah, Toto. Michael McDonald comes on. Oh man, everyone's singing in the car. Yeah, Steely Dan, Doobie St- Brothers, classics. They're all just they were in it. They're just like, oh, I love this. They're all singing along. I'm just yeah. like, gotcha, bitch. <laughs> uh, one of the guys I work with said he just puts on a Daft Punk playlist for the weekend, and people of every age are like, oh, I, I know this song. This is great. <laughs> I love Daft Punk. Or, like, some Gen Zers will be like, oh, have you ever heard this, like, one concert that they recorded and blah, blah, blah? <laughs> Gen Zers talking, like, yeah, you know this group Daft Punk? Yeah. <laughs> like, I, I can't stand you. <laughs> <laughs> they were playing Daft Punk to, like, test the sound system out on the main stage. And I was like, ooh, is Daft Punk coming? <laughs> Wouldn't be surprised. They pop up everywhere. Skrillex popped up. Skrill did? Yeah. How, so the how was this at? Sunday oh, yeah. night, I finished at, like, 10. And I like went to the office and turned in my badge and my gun and I'm like, get me home. <laughs> and they're like, all right, we'll find you a ride. They're like, hey, can you bring Jesse back? But oh, I didn't have my case for my walkie talkie. The, they gave us these brand new walkie talkies with like a case with like charger and everything. I forgot my case. So at the hotel? Yeah. Okay. So they had to have someone drop me off at the hotel and then bring my walkie talkie back. So they're trying to like figure that out. And then I hear him mention something about Skrillex. I was like, wait, what about Skrillex? They're like, oh, he's going on after Blink-182. I was like, all right, I'm going to stay. Uh-huh. <laughs> and uh, Matt was like, he was like, you just went from I need to go home now to, uh, and I was like, yeah, he's like, works for me. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, I don't have to figure this shit out till later. Go for it. So I went and watched the last like 20 minutes of Blink-182 and heard every song. It was great. <laughs> <laughs> all the songs that you wanted to hear. <laughs> yeah. What is it? Forever and, and ever. ever. Yeah. Let's make this last one. I showed up to that song. Oh, and then, shit. And then they did uh, all the small things. Oh, yeah. <laughs> What's my age again? <laughs> and then, damn it. And I was like, fuck yeah, dude. We, done and done. <laughs> we, we made it. What were you guys playing the rest of the time? <laughs> That's what I was wondering. <laughs> what the hell did they do for an hour? <laughs> <laughs> they they had just got there when you got there. Yeah, they did twenty minutes and called it a night. I really hope that was the whole entire show. <laughs> Everyone would have been like totally cool with that. Bro, done and done. Like wh- I can't imagine anything else Blink One Eighty Two is doing. Yeah, and they were fully reunited again. Tom DeLonge was there. Oh shit! Yeah, it was sick. They're here in Austin, I think, or they just or they're coming here in Austin. To yeah. Austin and we should go are- watch the last twenty minutes of the show. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we'll pay $400 for those tickets. Yeah. They're so fucking expensive. It's perfect. I was in the VIP spot for that. Hell yeah, that'd and be dope. Sub Z. And then, uh, so yeah, I'm in the VIP spot. And I was like, all right, perfect. I'll be right here for Skrillex. This will set me up. It was like Skrillex, Fortet, and somebody else. They have like a super DJ group. Right. Um, 
that they tour with. Uh, so I'm in like the VIP area. It's like right against stage right. And then like 10 minutes after Blink-182 is done, they, like all these lights turn on in the middle of the field, mm-hmm. right behind like the main stage. Behind like... B- between all the VIP areas, like in the GA section uh, in front of main stage, all these lights go on and then these like spotlights shoot up into the air and then music starts playing and we realize that like Skrillex and all the DJs are on a platform in the middle of the crowd, in the middle of the GA crowd. Oh shit. So I was like, oh fuck, now I don't want to be in VIP. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be out with all the plebs now. I need to be over the civilians. Oh man. But I thought that was cool that they did that. Like the did, very last part of the festival, they're like, "No, we're gonna be with all the fucking people." Did Skrill do some of the Skrill classics, or did you watch any Skrill? Um, I didn't hear any classic songs. Like, I don't even know if Skrillex was DJing while I was there. Oh, okay. they, they were like switching off. Mm. Um, and they were like just like they were all pressing buttons together. Okay. So one guy would be mixing a song, and then another guy would get on the other controller and start mixing a song. Uh, they played some Ice Spice remixes, so I appreciated that. Ice Spice remixes. Yeah. There's an Ice by Zed remix that it's like, uh, have you heard that? Uh, the oh, the Clarity? Yeah, the Clarity yeah, one. Yeah, she sampled Zed for that. Yeah, 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 that one's pretty cool. I want somebody to do a... I love uh, the video for that song because it's such a slow song, and she does the same video for every song. <laughs> it's just her bent over twerking with her hand on her pussy. Yeah, she's about to do that until she gets the Megan the Stallion knees and they can't <laughs> twerk anymore. That's the way they go. They got to retire the twerk. I saw Megan, what year was that? Twenty. 20- 18 or 19 i think it was 2019 at summer jam in boston and megan the stallion was twerking on these like super high heeled cowboy boots like squatting all the way down to the ground and i was like yeah this woman's knees aren't long for the world bro those <laughs> the man strippers got like nba basketball player knees yeah. <laughs> they get them replaced at 30 yeah. years old i'm surprised she need to get that acl surgery now she she's has gonna to get some stem cells yeah she's gonna have to do some heavy rehab like your knees don't come back like that mm-hmm. dog yeah, so Ice Spice, right? how old is Ice Spice, though? She's like 22, 23. Oh, bro, she's got them young knees. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she twerked for another four or five yeah, years. she can still do that thing. Mm-hmm. So, hey, embrace it, you know? Shake with your, literally shake yeah. what your mama gave you. Ice Spice was close by. She was at Revolve Festival, which is like a VIP invite-only influencer festival right next to Coachella. So It was called Revive? Revolve. Revolve. I oh. think it's a company, mm. like a makeup company or something, or, or a magazine. I have no idea. But they just invite like TikTokers and YouTubers and celebrities out. So Ice Spice played at that party. <laughs> Don Tolliver played at that party. I didn't know he was dating Kelly Uchis. I got to see Kelly Uchis for like three songs. I don't know who Kelly Uchis is, but I knew Don Tolliver. She had the Kelly U cheeks out. That's for sure. Oh shit! She was all in this like denim outfit. It kept she was like twerking and Man. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Young Knees. <laughs> God. My knees just cracked hearing that. I just thought about twerking and my knees yeah, locked up. They're I was just, not twerking. I did not do any dancing. No dancing. I was too hot and tired for that. Nah. We. I saw one gorilla song. I saw three Kali Yuta songs. I went to see K Trinata. I got to see the first 15 minutes of his set. And he played one of my favorite house songs that he's done. He played a Kalela remix that he's done. And then he played a Gold Link song that he produced. And I was like, all right, I just heard every. <laughs> I was like, if you played the Tidra Moses remix, this would be like an added bonus. But I was like, I just heard three songs that I love. All right, time to go. I just got the fuck out of there. Whatever happened to Gold Link? He had a little run and then he disappeared. I don't know. Yeah. It's just, yeah, it's, K-Tron produced a bunch of his like, best songs. Yeah. It's always funny when they like people have. I remember like in college, I thought everyone was going to be the next big thing. I was like, I need to be on this. They're all going to blow mm-hmm. up. None of those guys ever blew up. Mm-mm. No one, like, they had just had little runs. Yeah. So. Yeah, Golig had a bunch of songs with Falcons, who's another producer. Yeah. That I love. Falcons had a party right down the street, an unofficial party. And I could have, like, walked or Ubered there. It was at, like, 10 p.m. And I was so fucking tired. And I was like, oh, dude, you're 35. <laughs> go, go home, man. <laughs> like, if I... I, maybe I could have left my van on site and walked down the street 30 minutes and got into this party and then got drunk and then have to walk all the way back or take like a hundred dollar Uber back. Like, I don't know what time I would have left that party because everyone's leaving Coachella like midnight, one in the morning, two in the morning. Right. So that's when like shit's like the craziest over there. 
that's when I would have wanted to leave that party. Like if I got there at ten, like two, like four hours of party would have been way too much for me. No. So I'm like, I gotta, I gotta be smart about this. <laughs> I yeah. was like, don't go. I just went. I was like, go home and hit the weed vape until you pass out. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what I did. And, I'm, and I wasn't. I didn't have any FOMO the next day. I was like, I'm 35 now, dude. You've you've done it. I've been to Falcons parties before. You know what's it's weird fun. about like the FOMO part is like I don't even have FOMO like not going out. Mm-hmm. <coughs> I the only thing that I feel like when I don't is like man, I could have done some comedy, but I even feel old for that sometimes. Mm. And I come out and I'm just like, ah. yeah, like, I'll go out and do comedy. I'll stay out late for that. But like just going out to like get fucked up. I put myself in like a shitty situation later on. I'm like, I don't, I don't have the patience for that anymore. Oh no, not even the energy. I don't have the knees for that. <laughs> <laughs> don't have the knees for it. Nah. After Blink 182, a bunch of people like squatted down on the ground. They just like sat down in the middle of the fucking VIP viewing area. They're like, "This is my space." And just like <laughs> everyone's like tripping over them and shit. And then I look down. They're all pulling Molly pills, like Molly capsules, out of little baggies, at like. 10 p.m. I'm like, you're just starting to take Molly now. And then I thought back to me like four years ago. I mean, <laughs> taking sure. Molly at 10 p.m. I'm yeah, like, yeah, because you take it by 10 by like midnight, 1 a.m., you're going to be fucking hitting it. Yeah. Like that's when it's going to be hitting you when the party's turning up. Yeah. Especially at a festival. We're like, oh, we're just getting started. You know, I mean, I'm not, when I go to Columbia, I might have some nights that go out like that. Oh, yeah. When you leave for Columbia, I have to replace you on the podcast. Yeah. We or should not do the podcast. <laughs> Oh my god, that's gonna suck. Get a guest host. Yeah, we have to start road. We'll start auditioning people. Should we bring in a audition? To have a put it out there that we're looking to someone to replace me on the podcast. Yeah, for a month. I'll see if I can get Kyle Dowdy in here. <laughs> <laughs> like Kyle, go podcast with me for a month. Uh, love Kyle. Yeah, he's good on the pod. Yeah, he's been friend of the pod. He's been on this before. He's a friend of the pod. Yeah. But yeah, uh, I don't know, man. Just when do you leave for Columbia? Uh, June eighteenth. Okay, cool. We got some time. Yeah, but like when I, when, I don't know when you just travel. Like nights just ha- happen a little bit differently, mm-hmm. you know. Because also, there's not like anything you have to be doing. No, you're fucking around. Yeah, lot, yeah. Lot, there's gonna be a lot of heavy fucking around. I wanna, I wanna find a way to do comedy in Columbia. I think that'd be hilarious. It's gotta be somewhere. It's so big now. Yeah, Columbia. Um, and then we're gonna hit uh Ecuador. Mm-hmm. We're gonna go to the Galapagos Islands. Ooh. Yeah, you can only fly there from mainland Ecuador. That's yeah. where uh, that's where Darwin was when he came up with the theory of uh, whatever he came up with. Yeah, with the birds. With down the there. birds, yeah. I'm checking out so I'm gonna be out there with the birds, see what theory theory I come up with these birds. What kind of birds are those? <laughs> A lot of chicken heads out chicken, here. Yeah. <laughs> You're studying the beak sizes on the chicken heads. Yeah, you know, you gotta So yeah, that's gonna be dope. And then I'll probably hit Mexico City. I have a friend there on the way back, I'll hit Mexico City, so um yeah. And then in a best case... You're like traveling backwards from Kat because she was in Mexico City and now she's like making her way down to Columbia. Oh, shit. She'll be there before you, I think. Yeah. I wonder where else... I'm also trying to hit Peru. Mm. If if it works out perfectly, I hit Peru as well. So it would go... Are you doing ayahuasca in Peru? If I hit Peru, probably. It would pop up. You know, pull up. So someone offered me ayahuasca here in Austin. Was it a a yoga chick with toe rings? (laughs) Nah. It was like a, probably like an old, she's probably like in her, maybe she's like 40 or so, late 30s, 40. Yeah. And like. Is she, she a spiritual chick? Yeah. Like one of those, but they yeah. have like a ranch and they do like ayahuasca retreats and oh, stuff. She up wants there. you to go out to the fuck ranch. And do some <laughs> ayahuasca. We need some more Negroes out here. Yeah, do some dude. fucking and not ayahuasca. Like, they're going to, uh, they're going to get out you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh, I'll let you know. <laughs> I've seen this movie before, <laughs> dog. Stay woke. <laughs> You're not getting me, dog. Not fooling me, but I'll let the Peruvians trick me. They, <laughs> they do an ayahuasca retreat at her ranch here in Austin? Would I do it? No, they do. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. So maybe I'll do one of those, but I think it'd be just cooler to do in South America. Yeah, way cooler. Way cooler. So Yeah. Um, if I do you might do get a- molested by a, a creepy shaman. While he blows cigarette smoke in your face and if I, if sing I, songs. Bro, if I don't get molested, then what was the whole experience Yeah, you never for? got the experience. <laughs> <laughs> what else what, does one become an altar boy, you know? But yeah, so we'll see about that. And then, uh, yeah, so if that works out, we hit Peru, but then hit Mexico City, hit all that. 
and then be back here in Austin rethinking if I want to move just out of the country again. Yeah. You going to relocate? Sometimes I think about it. Yeah. I think about relocating. I think it'd be crazy to live in Asia for a year. Are you going to do stand-up in Asia? I'll do stand-up. My goal is to do stand-up everywhere I go. Yeah. From here on out, just to find stand-up everywhere I go. Mm -hmm. And It's in China. There are people that book... (laughs) They book these tours in China. It's like Shanghai. Uh, Tom Segura did it like years ago, and they made a documentary that they released a few years ago called I Need You to Kill. And there's this whole like Asian tour that they do over there. Yeah, I, I don't know if that'd work with... I wonder how that'd work with niggas in China. Not great. Well, you're performing to like expats. Well, that's what I'm saying. I think that part would work. But like when I was trying to go out there for like a, to teach abroad, mm. they pretty much so has told me is like... We're not going to send you to China. No, they want... Who do they want? Uh, they don't even really want me. I don't, they want white people. Yeah. Have like, you seen that that documentary they made about the, the, white, the white actors in, in China? Oh, that Vice did? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That shit. Yeah, they want like a Ken doll to go over there and just pretend to be smart. You just be suave. Put on a suit. That's all it takes. Yeah. Just trim your beard up. Put on a suit. You're good. I have my one suit I can wear. <laughs> your seersucker suit? <laughs> <laughs> Where if I, oh crazy <coughs> yeah what else has been going on uh don limon got fired which i find is wild don lemon yeah don limon bro i totally missed this when did this happen <laughs> like a day ago and tucker carlson got fired too like the day before did we lo- oh i saw someone post like i can't wait for that don lemon tucker carlson podcast to come out bro that shit would be wild don limon and fucking tucker carlson they both got don't they have the biggest shows on tv they were the biggest anchors on their respective channels yeah what happened uh don limon apparently got into it with this uh guy presidential candidate or whatever and they called him a and he, he's just called him out for lying about like whatever he was saying. He's like, you're just lying. Now we're not even having a good faith argument. You're just making this shit up. Don Lemon said the guy yeah, was lying. Yeah, he just said that. He, and then like, apparently, I don't know, he got in some trouble. They fired him. Tucker Carlson, apparently during the, the Fox lawsuit, mm-hmm. some of his stuff was brought up by the opposition to dis, to be smirch Fox News. And then they were like, yeah, we got to get Tucker up out the paint. Damn. So I don't know what was in those messages, but whatever it was, Fox was like, nah, we good. Yeah, to cut your your Yeah, imagine star. LeBron James getting fired. What would you have to do? I don't know, man. That sucks. Tucker's going to pivot to the internet and blow up. He's already huge on YouTube. His videos get crazy numbers. Yeah. Tucker Carlson is single-handedly making white people terrified in the suburbs, shooting people out the door and shit. This is... This is some. Uh, he's he's going to have a Spotify exclusive podcast within so months. fast. Someone's yeah. going to give him some millions to to keep this thing going. Yeah, he'll be all right. Yeah, Don Limon, he'll be all right. No, I don't think so. Not as good as Tucker Carlson. Oh no, but Don Limon will be Don Limon, bro. He's a he's like a he's like a Brian Gumble. You can't keep those guys down. They're just yeah. like light skinned white guys that talk good. You think <laughs> NBC will pick him up? So, well, someone will pick up Don Limon. I'm sure of it. Yeah. Or I don't know if he has. Because he doesn't have a crazy message like, like uh, Tucker, Tucker Carlson. Carlson is like, yeah, trans people are coming to kill your children. Yeah, and then he's gonna be like one step below Alex Jones. You yeah. know, he's just gonna go out there into that space, and then they're gonna be like, but I don't know. Funny stuff has been coming about. <laughs> this one guy he interviewed, and he's like, "Fuck you, you're too annoying." He's yelling at this dude and swearing at him mm. and shit. I'm like, nice Tucker Carlson. I didn't know he had a show, show on CNN before he was on Fox. All these dudes are just fucking... Yeah, like Crossfire or something? Yeah, they're all yeah. just fucking grifters, bro. They just... The Candace Owens plan. You just go... But I think he was the conservative on Crossfire. That was his role. He was like the nerdy conservative with the bow tie. He always had a bow tie on. <laughs> yeah, John Stewart went on there and roasted him. Just yeah. Destroyed him. Yeah. Yeah, he just napalmed him on that episode. <laughs> yeah, it was way back in the day. Yeah. It was like 20 years ago. Which is crazy to think about that, like, things that we remember were, like, 20 years ago. Mm-hmm. It's like, I was there for that. Yeah. We watched the rise of Tucker Carlson. And the fall. And the fall, dude. And then the fucking him and Don Limon. It's crazy. Is he going out like, uh, what's his name? Bill. Fuck it. We'll do it live. Why can't I think of his name? Well, the only thing with Tucker Carlson right now is depending. There's no, there's no sexual harassment lawsuit, right? Not yet. That's like, the thing. Yeah. But apparently. If they fired him without sexual harassment. What the fuck was he doing in there? 
Bro, I'm saying. That's the only thing that gets you fired now is sexual harassment. But also, I think sexual harassment might be coming out. Oh, no. I think the messages were like, <laughs> they shed some light to some things that Tucker was trying to keep buried. Mm-hmm. And uh, during the lawsuit, they brought out some messages, and that's what people are speculating. It hasn't come out for sure, but there's no way that some shit is like that is not in the pipeline and you fire that dude like that. Like, that's your number one guy, and you're just going to give him the screws like that? Yeah. Nah, Stand something. So Tucker, bro, they so, he had to have done something, bro. He's he can't be coming out of this clean. You got to do something. Yeah, like if tough, like Don Lemon, I I'm get gonna, it. I'm gonna wait to see if I ride for Tucker Carlson or not. <laughs> You're not caving up just yet. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not exactly sure about this one just yet. No, if it's racism, fine. <laughs> <laughs> so you're on Fox News. It's par for the course. How do you think you become number one in the ratings? <laughs> Number one primetime television show. <laughs> An end bum? Yeah. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> what are we doing here? We're all adults. Are we su- who was surprised? Uh, anything else happened at Coachella? I saw it knocked loose. They had a circle pit and like crowd surfing going. I don't think they had a barricade on stage. People were just on stage the whole time. Doing so- a circle jerk? Circle, yeah, they were circle jerking each other. <laughs> circle jerk. I heard that happened at Coachella. We had a good circle jerk out. Yeah. On the on the playa. Wait, yeah. no, that's Burning Man. Yeah, gay Chella, dude. Everyone goes there. Um, did I see anyone else? No, I think I named everybody. Blink One Eighty Two, Skrillex, K Tronada, Gorillas. Yeah, that's about Kelly Uchis. Kelly Uchis. I didn't see any like what new acts. Name? Everyone's like, yeah, you gotta go to the small stages and see like the names that you don't know, like. You might see something cool. Like, you can do that at ACL. You can just pop up at a small stage and there's something cool going on. Did you know any of the other people you were working with? Um, Like, had you met any of them before? Yeah, Frank we worked with at ACL. Yeah, yeah, Frank. Friendly Frank. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he started dapping me up throughout the festival. I think just because I was someone he recognized. Yeah. He At first when I met Frank, I was like, this is a crotchety old man. But then yeah. by the end of it, I was like, ah, oh, this is my guy Frank. And now we're cool and shit. We just, I don't know. He's just, he's an old man. Yeah, I'll chat him up now. Yeah, he's just an old crotchety guy. He's cool yeah. though. Wait, you talking about old, old Frank? Yeah. No, there's like a younger Frank who's like always in a bad mood as well. Okay. Seems like it goes with the name. Yeah. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just Frank young. O? Frank O. I don't know. I don't know. You remember from ACL? Yeah. Okay, then. I think you remember me from ACL. All right. But yeah, then there's the old guy, Frank. Yeah. I met up with him. So I took the, I got to LAX and I had to take a shuttle to the car rental place. So I do. And it turns out I'm at the wrong location. Fuck. I was supposed to go to one that was like even closer, I think, to the airport. <laughs> so Frank ended up there too. A bunch of us needed to go to the to the other place. We read the, the email wrong. So this one kid just drove us in his van because he was at the right place. But yeah, old man Frank was there. And he's like, he's like, where do you live? I was like, Austin. He's like, oh, I lived in Austin for many years. I'm happy to be out of there. Yeah, he's <laughs> just like an old. He's like, he said uh, this year is his 50th year working in the music industry. Yeah, he's done some crazy like names and shit. He's been around for a minute. He's been on bus tours with like heavy metal bands and shit. Yeah, like all this time. Like, people were actually rocking and shit. Like, yeah. He's like when wild shit used to happen. Then yeah. he was driving the fucking bus for those crazy. Yeah, he started bands. in the '70s when you could get away with anything, as yeah, we discussed. Yeah, bro. Like you wouldn't believe all the 15 year olds on the bus, dog. Dude, that guy's seen so many girls get. <laughs> seen anyway, so, <laughs> seen Mick Jagger do some that guy's, great shit. Yeah, that guy's got this. That's how you stay in this industry for a long time. Yeah, you, you keep, keep your, your mouth running. shut. Yeah, you shut the fuck up. He's like, I didn't see anything. That's a superpower in 2023. He was wearing an Astro World hoodie. I was like, were you there for that? He's like, yep. And then didn't say anything else. <laughs> never address anything now. Mm-hmm. Is that what old dudes do? You just never address things? You're just like, hey. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he was over it. I don't even know. He, I didn't even see him the whole the whole time. I don't even know what he was doing. Um, Emily, Blair, Matt. I recognized all them. Yeah. From ACL. They were all there. Everyone kept talking about this guy, Matt. And they were like, I'm not going to say his full name. But they're like going on and on about him, telling all these like crazy stories. And I like have like this like image in my head of like who this guy could be. He's like some like New York tough guy who is like a, like a wild party man and like gets drunk and like just don't don't give a fuck. And like has this like crazy attitude and blah, blah, blah. 
And then I, I meet the guy and I'm like, oh, wait, I met you at ACL. I'm like, this is the guy. <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe I'm seeing like, maybe he's 35 now. Maybe he's over it. Like, I was like, I, I, I got to party with this guy. I got to see what's going on. Yeah. But then once I realized that was him and like we recognized each other from ACL, we were like joke around and shit. And uh, he got me the ride Sunday night. He was like, yeah, go watch Skrillex. Then I went out like face the joint all to myself that somebody gave me. And then came back like stoned as fuck. I'm like, I'm ready to go home. <laughs> it's, like, it's like, all right, yeah, I got you. Oh, shit. Um, oh, yeah. So uh, someone from whose crew was that? Oh, one of Toby and Wigway's dancers dropped a vape pen in my backseat. Um, Is that the one we're puffing right now? No. Oh, shit. No, that one only had like 10 puffs left. <laughs> <laughs> we went through that quick. Uh, oh, some girl pulled up next to me. I parked my van on the grass. She parked her van next to me. And she's like rummaging all through her car. And I roll the window down. I'm like, what's up? And she's like, my car stinks like weed. And as soon as she said that, the <laughs> smell of weed just hit me in the face. <laughs> and I was like, damn, your van does smell like weed. She's like, yeah. And everyone would like... Everyone I've given a ride to has like commented on it. She's like, I gotta find where it is. So we start searching through her van, and I get to the back seat, and she opens up the back doors and looks under the seat, and she's like, right there, right under you. I look down, there's a full vacuum sealed bag of 14 grams of weed, half an ounce of weed under the seat, unopened. I'll take <laughs> And then next to it is a little plastic like cigarette pack of 20 pre rolls. And I was like, she was like, this is a lot of weed. I was like, yo, this is a lot of fucking weed. <laughs> I was like, this is a half ounce. She's like, oh, all right. She's like, yeah, I don't really smoke. I can't handle weed. I'm going to give this to my roommate. And I was like, oh, I'll take these joints. And she's like, you can have one. And snatched them out of my hands, opened it up, and gave me one fucking joint. Get the fuck out of yeah, here. Yeah, dude, come on. I thought we were in this together. Nah, I would have been like, nah, I'm taking 10 at I'm least. dumb. I should have just pocketed that shit. Yeah, you shouldn't say nothing. Oh, well. haters out here. <laughs> dude. But like the half ounce, I would have flown home with the joints. I I would not fly, yeah, home, fly with the, home with the half ounce. The half, they might be like, come on now. <laughs> I don't think TSA gives a fuck though. They really don't. I've flown. My friend flew out to when you're in Italy. He showed up with at least an ounce of weed. Mm -hmm. When I flew to California and other places out of the country, Mexico, I definitely flew with like I don't know, like a half eighth or a quarter. Mm -hmm. I don't. You just you could put it. You could put an ounce in like socks and pants pockets. I guess if like, you put it in socks, it, like it caught in socks, it just pops up as plant material. Yeah. So it just scans right through. Mm hmm I had. Uh, you're allowed to carry vape pens on planes, so I just like took the vape with me. Yeah. I wasn't. I wasn't tripping on that. No, straight up. That's dumb. And you're in a state. You're in California where it's legal. They don't care where you're going. No. You're allowed to have the weed right here. Yeah. They. They don't get when you get to wherever you are, that's on that's on <laughs> that's you. your problem. That's your yeah, problem. Figure yeah. your shit out. And when you land in Texas, they're not like stopping everybody. Like, did you bring weed in here? Like, they don't give a fuck. Nah. They're like, did you bring bombs here? That's all they want to know. They really. That's all they check for to like get all the festivals too. Are just bomb like dog, like yeah, and like don't bring guns. I don't allow guns nah. in there. I never. Either. I didn't bring my vape pen on site because I didn't want to get high at work, and I knew I would get high at work if I had the vape pen. Because as soon as I found that chick's vape pen in my back seat, I immediately puffed it. I was like, I got two hours to kill. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'll take a little puffy. Yeah. Uh, oh, someone left one single edible in my back seat. I found on Sunday night when I was cleaning all the trash out of my van. It was like a gummy wrapper. And I like felt it. And I looked inside. There's just one single gummy. So I took that before I went to see Blink-182. But I don't think it did anything. Nah, we, I didn't do nothing during the fest during this festival. The two step, the country fest. Yeah, you didn't I drink ate, any moonshine. Nah, I ate a no lot. Bud Lights. Uh, did you see anyone drinking Bud Light at the country fest? Everyone was drinking Bud Light at the country. Hell fest. yeah, dude. Yeah, hell yeah, bro. They're still puffing it. They dropped that Texas edition can. <laughs> they're, like, <laughs> they're like, we're back, we're yeah. back. <laughs> hell yeah, brother. Bro, as soon as the American flag cans come out, it's it's a wrap. No it, bro, it's so weird because everyone's dressed alike, and it looks so weird. Yeah, like most festivals, people are dressed all sorts of crazy ways. Coachella was like, there's like kind of one theme. Everyone, either the girls were in like the baggy like fucking snowboarding pants, Ugh. or they were in like a like a crocheted see through like gown. Oh, with shit. a bikini underneath. Ah, I know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, they were a see-through outfit with a bikini underneath. That's like that was the only two choices. That Even you yeah, had. you'd wear the baggy pants with like the sheer like bra top or whatever. Yeah, like, see-through. Yeah, that seems. 
Not country fest, bro. They were all rocking cowboy boots, hats, shorts, and some skirts. I was yep. like, flannel, heavy flannel. I was like, I could, I can get behind this. What was the uh, the weather like here? Uh, Is it still flannel season out there, bro. Some days it, it varied. One day was like seventy degrees. One day was like eighty five. Yeah. Was this a three day fest? Yeah, just Friday, Saturday. Well, I worked Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Mm-hmm. I didn't know I was gonna be working Friday, but I did. I didn't do anything. It's weird because, like, saying, like, I worked. I was, like, on standby till I went to pick up my car. And then I, like, picked up another guy on the way, dropped him off at the rental place, yeah. showed up there. Then I went to catering, hung out in my van for, like, three hours. And I dropped <laughs> the guy off at a hotel. These gigs are so easy. Dude. Yeah, sometimes so I'm, like, I didn't do anything, yeah. you know. But I got, like, a full day's worth of, like, pay for that. I don't is- think I'll do another two weekends in a row. Mm-hmm. I'll do like a single festival, come home, single festival, come home. Yeah, going like back to back. Because what'd you do in between time? I went to Fontana and hung out at uh, Jelly's house. Did you, have the the va- did, Jelly. did you have the van through it or did you have to no. take it back? Yeah, so they took the keys to the van. Oh, shit. But they had a shuttle going to LA, so I just got dropped off close to where he lives. Okay. And then took an Uber to his place. Mm-hmm. Stayed there for three days. And then... Uh, took an uber to like a truck stop and they just picked me up on the highway on the way back oh shit yeah we- so it was better than being at the quality inn <laughs> in indio california <laughs> did you have a roommate or did you have your own room i had a roommate but he worked overnight so we never saw each other oh okay yeah that's kind of convenient yeah i think they uh tried to room most people up like that either it was like your friend or it was like somebody yeah working yeah. overnights that's cool yeah it was easy dude but it was just a fucking long ass ten days, man. I was so happy to be and like I, I, I still haven't even like settled in yet. Yeah, no, that I think that because that time in between makes it feel like it's a part of it, even though you're technically not working when you're there. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. And I lost a couple hours. It's only it's six twenty eight here. It's only four twenty eight in California right now, dude. Uh, your body will adjust. Yeah, yeah. Cause you came back, you didn't go to sleep. No, I came back and. <laughs> Didn't go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Check out the Patreon for what happened when Jesse lit. Yeah, we'll find out what happened. <laughs> um, what do we got coming up? You work in EDC next month? I'm going to do yeah, a uh, Hangout Fest, which I thought was in New Orleans. I think it's in Alabama or Arkansas or something. I have no oh, idea. Oh, for real? Yeah. Oh, shit. But maybe I fly into New Orleans. I'm not sure. Oh, I've okay. been ignoring all emails. I think I got to do... I keep getting... Uh, Emails from Coachella, Golden Voice, the people that own Coachella, uh-huh. saying like, you need to complete your training. And I'm like, the fuck I do? <laughs> <laughs> I left. I submitted all my hours. I'm done. Yeah, bro. Pay me. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bitch better have my money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I no all that nonsense. Mm-hmm. But yeah. But EDC, that's coming up. I was looking at tickets for Vegas. I'm like, man, when did flights get so fucking expensive? How did, when did this happen? It's like overnight's flights went from being like you can fly to Vegas. I remember when I was in like college, like we flew to Vegas or like before Vegas was like one fifty you can fly to Vegas. Mm. Now I'm like four hundred bucks to fly to Vegas from Austin? What are we doing? Yeah. Yeah, a bunch of people went to Vegas in between the Coachella weekends, but they rented a car for like two hundred bucks. Mm. I went down. Yeah, I guess if you have like four people, mm. it's like fifty bucks a person. Yeah. How far is a how far of a drive is it? Like two, three hours, I think. Mm. It was pretty close. That's not too bad. I keep trying to think if I know anyone in Vegas, and it's bugging me because I'm sure I do. But if I don't know them enough to remember that they live in Vegas, yeah. Uh. My boy E's in Vegas. You hit him up. <laughs> hey, what up, E? Oh yeah, you gotta watch this video. I don't care that we're on this podcast and I can't show the video. Go to go to the to Tech Nine's Instagram, everybody, and find this video. I'm going to show Ben. It's my favorite video in the whole wide world. All right. This is high praise for a video. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, it's a great video. I don't know why I'm doing this during the podcast. We're at the end of the podcast. No one listens to this. <laughs> if you get this far and you found the video, message us for a prize. Yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> congratulations. No, I can't find it. All right. This is bad podcasting. I'll find it afterwards. Remind me. All right, now I'm. Curious. But it's my friend bouncing a guy off the stage. <laughs> now you're curious. Yeah, let me see if I can find it. <laughs> Every time you say that, I just think it's like him belly bumping someone off stage. Or is he hemming him up? 
Alright. Watch. <laughs> so this Tech Nine's finishing his show. Oh shit! I think I saw this somewhere. I thought it was staged. You might have seen me repost it. No, that kid, Tech Nine's trying to end his show, and some kid hops up on the stage because there's no barricade, tries to do a backflip, and mid backflip, the security guard catches him and pushes him into the crowd. Yeah, it kind of looks sick. It looks choreographed. It looks it lo- choreographed. Yeah, it looks choreographed. Uh, choreographed. Like, yeah, the whole th- it looks staged. I watched that and I thought it was like. Oh, that's got to be staged. Like, it was too clean. Yep. Because he caught him half spin, and then he pushed him back. He landed on his feet and just, like, pushed him off the stage. Yeah, it- he's a ninja, dude. <laughs> he's got the fucking balaclava on with, like, the dreads, like, poking out of the back. Uh, he's got, like, the black tactical vest on and shit. He's got a taser on him. <laughs> that dude back got almost got tased. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know that. Like- Good on him though. He he was he was on it. That dude tried to do the. He's on his job, bro. There's he, another video where this guy hops up on stage, and he just steps right in front of Tech Nine and just like death touches the kid. He just like falls off the stage, <laughs> just like, pokes. It. I think he was, like, you can almost use like one finger. The kid's on the edge of the stage. He just like poked him, and the kid just <laughs> fell off. <laughs> nope. Oh man, I had a teacher in high school that was like a green beret in like the seventies and sixties. Yeah, and he could do that shit. Mm-hmm. He'd like just like touch your neck and then you'd just like your arm would be numb for like three hours you're just like twitching and shit there was always that kid in high school that would do that too they just do like the pressure points yeah but or yeah. like how to put you in a sleeper hold <laughs> always trying to i was like nah dude no. <laughs> when i was in eighth grade a bunch of kids figured out how to give each other sleeper holds <laughs> they would just put each other to sleep in the hallway all the time people would do that oh yeah that shit always happened not to me though no one ever fucked with me like that I no like, nah, because I don't know, man. They wanted each other to do it. They're like, yeah, yeah. They, like, yeah. People like wanted that shit. I was like, nah, I'm not trying to like paint or pass out or whatever the yeah. fuck y'all are doing with this bullshit. Could you do a backflip off the wall? There was always the one kid that could do the backflip off the wall. Yeah, there's always just the one kid. Could you ever backflip in your life? I could at some point, but those days are over. <laughs> you don't got the knees for that anymore. Dog, I never really had the knees or the nerve for it. I almost landed on my neck one time, and then I was like, man, it just shook me for backflips. I'm like, what am I? Who's this for? Yeah. But there was a time when I was cool. Mm. But no, those days are over now. Yeah, there was one kid that would always do a backflip at lunch. <laughs> You're like, everyone clear out of the way. You have to clear off a section of the wall. Well, the other kid in the background was always bumping table, bumping grinding. Yeah. There was always that one kid that was just the sickest of doing pencil My friend beats. Dan Angel and I had a good bit. He would grab my ears, and then I would grab onto his wrists. So it was really him picking me up by uh, using his wrists with my hands. But it would look like he grabbed my ears and he would just swing me around the hallway and everyone's like, oh my God, put him down. You're going to rip his uh, ears off. Uh, <laughs> we had a bit. It was a good bit. Everyone thought he was holding my ears. <laughs> wow. Because you, you do have holdable ears. They are quality size. Yeah, ears. giant ears. So he would go yeah. he would go all big and he'd be like, oh, and then latch onto my ears and I'd go, oh no, my ears. And I would hold onto his wrist. <laughs> he would swing me around the room. Right, go to bit. <laughs> we used to run Classic that. bit. We would do it in band practice every day. Oh, band practice? Yeah. You played in band? In eighth grade, I was in band. Seventh and eighth grade. What did you play? Band. Snare drum. The snare drum? Yeah. Were you any good at drumming? I was pretty damn good, but I never practiced. Like, So I was only as good as I could get in class. Oh. <laughs> I would never go home and practice. If I did, I would have been so sick at drums. Oh, shit. Mm-hmm. Do you think you could ever get it back? Is it like riding a bike? Yeah. So you think you I'm could waiting be- for Andres Rodriguez to buy a drum set, so then I'll just be at his house. We'll be doing the podcast from Andres' room because I'm just going to be playing his drum set all the time. <laughs> what is this, Step Brothers? <laughs> yeah. Don't touch my drum set. <laughs> yeah, please. Did you touch my drum set? <laughs> no. Man, well. This has been another episode of the Lonely Man's Podcast. Yeah, I think we did it. Patreon.com slash Lonely Man. So I don't think we've had a new subscriber in like a year. We could use a new subscriber on the Patreon. Yeah, dude. I think we're just, we just need to put it out into the universe. Or yeah. Just out into the internet. Some like, people say Patreon's on a downswing right now. Maybe it's the economy. Who knows? You know, I feel like OnlyFans is still popping. Shout out to the Elite 11 on the Patreon. Still holding it down. If we get the same people for a year, we got to give them like a bonus or something. We'll do another. We'll do an extra bonus episode for them, uh, so they can also skip that episode. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and not listen to it. Ish Gupta, I think Ish Gupta like forgot. He's gonna download that app that tells you all the bills you're paying <laughs> that you're unaware of. <laughs> and he's gonna be like, "What the fuck is that? Lovely man. <laughs> what is?" 
He's gonna be dating some girl and get a lonely man's bill. It's like, what are you watching here? He's yeah, like, what the fuck is what this? What the fuck is that? Even not be explained. Cancelled. Yeah. <laughs> oh well. All right, everybody. But Thank love you. Love you nonetheless. Peace. <laughs>